Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another StarCraft 2 cast for the last player standing. StarCraft 2 open number 2. My name is Copo and today we're going to be watching a TVZ between Cerberus, our yellow Terran over here in the right spawning position, and SGM Hugh, our blue Zerg up in the top left hand spawning position. Uh, map is Zelnaga Fortress, as I'm sure you guys are aware, this seems to be a staple in this tournament. Again, this is another cast for the LPS, last player standing. StarCraft 2 Open number 2, please visit them at their website, uh, lastplayerstanding.com, as everything we upload on our YouTube channel here will be, uh, will be captured and uh, placed on that website for everybody to enjoy and, uh, and for their own personal viewing pleasure. So, we are seeing still another round of 64 match, so this is still best of one, as I do believe they're talking about in the chat. Uh, everybody's making sure they understand exactly what's going on. Uh, we have seen this map fairly often so far in the matches we've casted. Uh, not a map I'm incredibly familiar with, seeing as I don't stay up till 4 or 5 in the morning to watch GSL all the time, but uh, from what I understand, this map is uh, either loved or hated by different players. Uh, it depends, really. Uh, sometimes it's hard to take a third, sometimes it's really easy to take a fourth, sometimes it's uh, you just see one base all-ins. So you're never really sure what you're going to get with this map, which I do believe is why some people don't like it. They don't like the unpredictability, but uh, so far we've seen some fairly entertaining matches on this map, so we'll see exactly how this one goes today. Uh, it does look like our Zerg player. Is he gearing up for a fast expand? What's he gearing up for? He just seems to be building more drones. Well, uh, yeah, we see the drone moving off there. He looks like he's going to go for the uh, the fast expand as natural. Do you see a normal 12 barracks, uh, approximately 13 refinery by the Terran, so incredibly standard openings here. Uh, most Zergs feel safe to uh, fast expand in any matchup except for uh, ZVZ, which obviously is too unpredictable to really uh, safely fast expand every time. Uh, most uh, most other matchups, those Zergs feel safe. They don't, they aren't often threatened by their fast expansion, uh, especially against Protoss. They're usually able to fast expand no problem. Against Terran, sometimes they get bunker rushed, you know, too raxed, and uh, that can hinder the expansion a little bit. But it's usually a fairly safe thing to do. So you see, fairly, uh, still fairly standard openings. Orbital command going down for Cerberus or Yellow Terran. Drone scout tries to come up here and try and get a bit of information, but he's going to be uh, soundly stopped by that supply depot barracks wall. Definitely the most standard wall in the game. Oh, look at this. We do see a bunker going up behind the mineral line of the natural uh, by Cerberus. Uh, I don't know if SGM Hugh has spotted this yet. Uh, no, 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 no. Not player cam. No, he doesn't see this. It's actually just out of his vision. Uh, that's highly unfortunate. Well, I'm sure this SCV might pop in into his vision, but uh, this might make this hatchery under a little bit of early pressure. Uh, we do see some Marines. They aren't rallied inside the base. They aren't rallied to the to the bunker but I assume we'll see some Marines down there. I can't imagine that bunker will stay empty for too long. One Marine's making his long trek down there. See if he manages to get in there and inflict any damage. The drone does spot the SCV leaving, so it does know that the bunker is there. But this Marine will probably be able to get in there. Drones are being pulled, spine crawler being made. Trying to maybe defend this pressure. doesn't really want to mine from it yet. And there is uh, shooting going on at this hatchery. Uh, an SCV joins the Marine in the bunker. I actually wasn't aware that could even happen, but apparently it can. And uh, they'll be able to take pot shots at this hatchery because this is in range although it is uh, doing damage very slowly, almost as fast as the hatchery regenerates itself. You see a factory now going down for the Terran, he's using this, uh, this harassment to tech up. It's a chance to tech up, he's uh, not taking the expansion behind it, which, uh, which is usually a good idea, but I mean, Tekken's, Tekken's got its place too. Second spine color being dropped here to hopefully defend this bunker pressure, and uh, Queens and Zerglings aren't really sure what to do, the spine color can't do anything from back there, so it's going to uproot and try and get in. Uh, this one Marine in the bunker won't be able to do nearly enough damage to try and kill us before it roots, even though they take... Uh, pretty much eons to root. Zerglings coming in here and a spine crawler and a queen all picking away this one poor little marine. He steps out of the bunker and gets promptly killed, but this bunker will be salvaged in time. Uh, this harass was kind of cute. Uh, it was, you know, kind of different, but ended up doing actually nothing. Uh, factory got swapped over on the reactor now, so factory is not part of the wall off. We just see Hellions being made. Uh, we won't see any blue flame do that reactor, but we will see uh, some red flame hellions going in there and doing some additional harassment. Tech lab being made on the barracks, and the barracks is promptly lifted off. I assume we'll probably see the starport landed on there, uh, either for some quick ravens or some quick banshees. Uh, judging by what Terran players usually do in this matchup, I'm going to go with banshees. Uh, nothing wrong with some early banshee harass. Obviously, zergs are fairly weak anti-air early on. They only have queens, which, uh, while fast on creep, if you can drag them away, are uh, are fairly, fairly immobile. So if you can do those uh, do that banshee harass properly, you might see it be fairly effective. Still no expansion taken from behind. He is allowing the Zerg to macro up, uh, allowing the Zerg to be a base ahead at all times. See the evolution chamber being dropped now, maybe to be part of that wall. Uh, actually, that's not really a wall. That crew tumor kind of psyched me out there, but uh, obviously fast upgrades are a good idea too, right? So 
do see spawn spawn larva is almost done there. We do see this uh, starport is pumping out a banshee. Uh, I was definitely right. We see these hellions moving in here, and the spine crawler is going to poke away at them. And this queen's probably going to do the same, but they are. Uh, they get through the, to the mineral line, and we are seeing a couple of drones roasted here. Uh, but obviously, blue flame is definitely beneficial in this case, as these hellions are not killing these drones uh, nearly fast enough. One ling is going to see here poke at them, and they are firing on the mains mineral line now. The drones continue to mine, and the queen chases them around. They are taking pot shots at these drones, and they are melting. A uh, decent number of them, actually. This isn't too bad of harass, but these Hellions will probably get shut down. They are all quite low health. One of them one falls. We're down to two from the initial four. Spinecrawler pokes another one and kills it. Now we only have one initial Hellion left in here, and this Queen will probably be able to take care of that. That might roast a couple more drones. We'll see. It does have two kills. Uh, yeah, another cute little harass there. We do see Cloak going out for these Banshees, so we will continue with this harassment up through Banshees. Uh, he's just been a harassing machine. Obviously, he knows that you can't let Zerg macro up, so he's just going to try and make sure he is as annoying as possible. Let's check and see exactly what we got going on there. Nine workers killed by those Hellions. Uh, maybe not all by those Hellions, but at least most of them were. So that makes it uh, a fairly effective for us. Obviously, four Hellions were lost, but nine workers were killed. And a little bit of mining time was lost. I don't believe he pulled too many drones off. But, uh, but yeah, it was fairly effective. Effective enough, anyways, as far as uh, Terran harassment goes. And these Banshees will be able to come in here. And uh, obviously, this one was thwarted by a Queen and maybe a Spore Crawler. This might have been scouted by the Zerg player, so he put up some preemptive spore crawlers so the cloak will actually be able to be fairly ineffective a wasted investment by the Terran player Let's see if he's going off here to check corners of the map and this match is just going to continue to fly around but really uh, with the addition of the spore crawlers the evolution chamber was shopped quickly so the spore crawlers basically shut down any cloaked banshee harass as they act as both anti-air and detection so we just see a bit of a lull here Terran's using this chance to uh, to macro up he's still only on one base but he is doing a fairly good job of uh, keeping his add-ons on all his buildings. He is uh, making sure everyone has either a reactor or a tech lab uh, to make sure they are at maximum efficiency. Command center is being built in the base and is almost completed. We do see a reactor going down in the starport. Likely see some medvacs out of that. Uh, if we do see any bio play, that one bench he gets back in around here. Might get a couple kills before it's uh, thrown away. Well, apparently it's going to run away. Actually, those queens might have scared it off. Queens are scary looking little buggers. Uh, we see a command center is finished. No attempt to lift it off yet. Marines are being produced two at a time from that uh, reactor barracks and from the tech lab barracks and we have another reactor barracks uh, I think we're going to see a very heavy marine composition here and uh, if history tells me anything the composition may be marine tanks we see another factory being dropped here and tanks are starting to be made siege mode has, uh, has been researched and completed and this little force will might be able to move out and we should see some medevacs coming out with that too to help keep the marines alive a little bit longer Spanish is going to try and swing in and maybe do some more damage this one was probably back but uh, obviously that cloak is very ineffective due to those spore crawlers. Uh, creep spread is very good by the Zerg. He's trying to make sure he can extend that map vision as far as he can. Uh, Banshee spots the drone dropping the third the third base here, and the Banshee will also be able to chase that queen away as it is cloaked, and there's no spore crawlers in the immediate area. Picks off that drone that was building the hatchery after the hatchery was cancelled. And uh, yeah, basically it's there to be a little bit annoying. Banshees also give great map control. The Zerg hasn't really been able to, he's had to keep his overlords back behind the bases. He hasn't been able to put them out in the middle of the map even though Banshees can't shoot air. But Banshees are doing a great job of uh, making sure the Terran is fully aware of what the Zerg's got going on at all times. Uh, the Zerg's creep spread is getting a little bit out there though. Uh, he is managing to take full advantage of his map hacks and uh, spread out into the into the unknown of the map if you will. Uh, we do see an armory being dropped here. I don't think we'll see Thors. We're probably going to see that used for uh, plus two upgrades. We have a single engineering bay. Yeah, just one engineering bay. Sometimes double engineering bays are dropped to get those upgrades going a little bit faster, but the Terran's doing a fairly good macro job. He's keeping his minerals and his gas quite low, and he is staying ahead of supply on the Zerg player. Infestors now do like do appear to be coming out, as well as Burrow being researched. Um, I might see some Burrow and Infestors out of that. Obviously, Burrow can be used for a multitude of units, though, and for other very annoying purposes, but Infestors uh, pair quite nicely with Burrow uh, due to the fact that it can drop infested Terrans while they're burrowed, and they can just sort of run away sneakily. It seems to be what they were made to do. Still two base versus three bases. Third base isn't quite up yet. Actually, it's only about a third done. So for the moment, they're equal on bases, but I'm sure the Zerg will take advantage of that third base, probably drone up on it, and allow his income to be to a skyrocket, basically. So this is how Zerg likes to play this game. Do you see just a Marine contingent with one tank? Uh, I figured we'd see more tanks, but maybe we'll only see the one. Do have two factories with tech labs on them. There's a second tank. Must have been hiding away while I was uh, busy talking about the Zerg. One medvac comes out here to try and keep his marines alive, but really you need more than one medvac for that many marines. We do see this force appears to be mobilizing, maybe moving out. Uh, the Zerg could potentially be unprepared for this. He has an infestors, but they are going in the wrong direction. 
Actually, they'll probably spot this Banshee, maybe try and fungal it. Uh, yep, looks like we see a fungal and a couple of infested Terrans being dropped here, but this uh, Marine tank push is actually quite fearsome. Uh, I imagine he probably should, might scan and take away these creep tumors, but apparently that's not his agenda. Huge fungal going down on all those Marines. Uh, even with combat shield, it does huge, huge damage to those Marines. And the Infestor's just going to go away with a big smile on his face saying, Oh, well done, guys. Marines are back, not getting healed by the med back, and Zerglings are getting roasted by the tanks, but Infested Terrans are being dropped all around the tanks, and the tanks are basically firing on themselves. And uh, those tanks go down quite quickly. Marines are all very low health upon med back, and uh, they do manage to stay alive for the time being. Med back's going to load up and maybe try and drop this third base, but there's four pillars there. He's not careful, he's going to lose a fully load of med back. Marines drop by the third base, and we're about to take uh, serious, get serious damage to this hatchery. I'm going to be careful that's those sport crawlers there, though it is quite low health. Uh, and uh, there goes the med back. Let's see, missed the micro a little bit there. Professor's coming in, one fungo can take out, no, oh, actually the broodlings can take out a fair number of the marines. One downside to killing a hatchery is you kill a couple marines, but I think that's a trade that the Terran's willing to do. Zerglings come in, stim down by the marines trying to run away, but Zerglings on creep with speed are basically the fastest unit in the game. Nothing's going to run away from those. Professor's come along to give their Zerg buddies a high five and then promptly return home. You see another command center being built at the natural by the Terran. He's going to lift that off and probably, I have to assume, take this base. It seems to be the logical third. Overlord's over here, chilling with the Banshee. Uh, can't understand why the two races are fighting. They're both trying to just be friends. But a couple Marines coming over here to maybe do some damage to these Overlords, kill a bit of the Zerg supply. Little does he know the Zerg has an excess of supply, but uh, obviously killing any uh, free units that he can is definitely advantageous for the Terran player. He's going to kill probably all three of these Overlords, but Zerg are going to come in and clean up this Marine force. I did manage to kill two overloads out of that though, and Infestors come along just to kind of join the fray maybe a little bit late. Do see still just basically Marines and tanks being produced. This one tech lab on the barracks is used for upgrades. He's gotten the two big ones, obviously Combat Shield and Stimpak. The medbacks are loading up, maybe preparing to do some sort of a drop on the Terran natu or the uh, Zerg natural. We do see a little bit of a Infestor Zergling force mobilizing in the middle, so you better be careful not to try and take all his forces away from the action. This medback, or this is a Banshee moving down. Uh, these Banshees are still giving great map control. Zerg is preparing up to take a fourth, but I'm sure it'll be spotted by uh, by the great map vision of the Terran player. This medvac fully loaded is now going around the corners of the map. But I do believe it might have been spotted by this burrowed Zergling, actually. Zergling was burrowed there to maybe try and prevent the base, but it might have also served to spot the medvac fully loaded that might be trying to do a drop at this fourth base here, trying to deny the Zerg from expanding like a madman, which is what Zerg seemed to like to do. We do see still Marines, Tanks, and Medvacs seem to be the unit composition of choice. Uh, Terran's trying to take his third base way, way out here on the Zerg side, but obviously he's not going to let that happen. Medvac goes down with one Marine, or will go down, I think, if it keeps being fungled, and there it goes. Command Center's going to be unable to land here. There's infested Terrans and uh, Infestors and Zerglings there, so obviously it's not going to be a safe place to land. We do see Mobius Reactor being researched, which should indicate some sort of ghost play. Uh, ghost against Infestors, maybe. We're talking about using some EMPs. Never hurts to try and uh, take get rid of that energy. Professor's obviously very good against Marines, so you want to try and keep your Marines alive because they are your main damage dealers. Marines are going to stand up here and try and get rid of those Infestors, but Lynx are going to surround and Medvacs won't be able to heal. Or maybe they will be able to heal in time. Uh, big Fungal goes down and those Marines will go down. Medvacs also take some serious damage there, but they'll be able to retreat. Command Center is going to land here and these tanks are going to be able to hopefully secure it. I don't believe there's been any uh, big airplay going on by the Zerg, so we should be able to just use these tanks to secure this expansion. I don't know why he wouldn't expand this way. All he has to do is get rid of a couple burrowed Zerglings and he'd be much safer as he's expanding away from his opponent, but instead he decides he's going to expand towards his opponent. Uh, I guess we'll see exactly if that's the correct play or not. Zerg is now sitting on four bases, not all of which are fully saturated, but all of which are able to produce larva. So he is sitting pretty uh, pretty good in that in that department. I'm assuming we'll probably see this turn into a planetary fortress. I don't imagine he turned that into an orbital. Uh, still, Marines, tanks, and now ghosts are being added, obviously, to combat the infestors. Definitely helps to get rid of that energy so that they don't have enough to fungal growth, fungal growth being the bane of Marines' existence. Zerglings run by to try and counteract this drop down here in the middle. Uh, fourth base here. Zerglings are actually bunched up and they're not doing a whole lot of damage here. You need to try and get them around those mineral patches, try and get us around. Medvac's actually doing a great job. There's a couple of Zerglings go around. The hatchery does go down. Uh, Zerg probably could have prevented the hatchery, hatchery from going down, but as it is, this Medvac and its drop did a great job. Uh, basically exactly what it intended to do. This creep spread is a little, getting a little bit out of hand though. Creep is starting to reach towards the Terran's uh, natural third as this burled Ling has prevented that from being his actual third. But we do see uh, mining going down here at the third base he decided to take on a planetary fortress being morphed. Uh, so we do see some income coming in there. Broodlords are being morphed by our Zerg player so obviously he managed to get a greater Spire up when I was not paying attention. But these Broodlords will be able to come in, uh, 
definitely tanks and planetary fortresses don't do that well against broodlords. Uh, they basically just shoot themselves to pieces when the broodlings come in. So hopefully we manage to get some vikings out. He's producing vikings, but obviously they won't be out quite in time. Tanks on siege, so they don't do too much damage to themselves, but Zerglings are able to run in, and his planetary fortresses are going to be unable to do anything really at all. Zerglings are running in. Tanks are sieging up, but they won't be able to do enough damage, I don't believe. Things actually get fried pretty, pretty quickly, but the Broodlord is still doing damage from afar. And this, uh, this repair going down on this planetary fortress is using up significant minerals for the Terran player. Actually, he's not repairing right now, he's just sitting them all around his planetary fortress, but whatever the case may be, these Broodlords are still doing great damage. EMP goes down on these infestors, and they do lose a significant amount of their energy, unable to fungal or even really do infested Terrans right now. His Marines are going to be able to plow right through and kill the Morphin Broodlords. Broodlords, three Broodlords are still uh, still in action though, and they all are quite well decorated. They all have a good number of kills. The Terran player is still sitting decently well. That third did not go down yet. Now we used to get Vikings over there to try and take all these Broodlords before this Broodlords uh, managed to kill this planetary fortress. Where are the Vikings on the map? There's got to be some kicking around here somewhere. Here come two Vikings coming over here, and a Marine just kind of joining, tagging along. Hopefully, they don't run into this Infestor force. Infestors can fungal the Vikings to try and take them down quickly. Uh, Broodlords obviously cannot attack the Vikings. One Broodlord goes down, Fungal goes down on the Vikings. They're still picking away at the Broodlords, which are still very incredibly slow. Uh, repair goes down on the Planetary Fortress, back to full health. And we may see mining resume at that base uh, any time now. Hmm. Meals being dropped down at that uh, that third base. Ah, drink of water. Water is definitely good for my voice. But this Infestor, uh, Ling, Broodlord, Corruptor Force of everything is still mobilizing outside the third base. Uh, the third base is definitely under attack. So you see long distance mining going down here. I don't believe that's intentional. He could just be mining normally from that base, but uh, apparently he's still trying to rebuild it. Uh, again, that was a bit of a mistake by the Zerg when he did lose that base. Broodlords are going to go in and attack the Planetary Fortress again, taking pot shots at the Refinery Planetary Fortress as it attacks the Broodlings. I don't know if the Terran players noticed yet. The Planetary Fortress is taking a bit of damage, but there isn't any Vikings over here to try and combat this. Uh, we see another Broodlord being morphed here, and Infestors are going to be able to take down whatever Vikings come in because they won't be able to come in in any great number. This is a marine tank uh, moving out here. Two Vikings are in the middle, but they won't be able to do any good over there when the Broodlords are over here. Uh, basically trying to destroy Terran's only viable source of income now as this uh, natural is almost mined out and his main is, I do believe, completely mined out. So we are dealing with uh, dealing with a lack of resources by the Terran. He is way up on supply. If he can just manage to kill these Broodlords, he'll be in a great position, but two Vikings is not going to be enough when there's numerous investors in the field. Fungals do go down and the Corruptors are able to clean up the rest force here. He really needs to bring some marines in and try and kill those broodlords. Those broodlords are doing horrible damage to his economy and uh, he would be in a great position if he could just kill those. They do cost a significant amount of money for the Zerg to remake. Uh, money is not exactly something that either player is having a surplus of at this point. Broodlords still still attacking this planetary fortress and he, he needs vikings over here to try and take these out. Uh, this repair is costing him numerous, numerous amounts of minerals and he isn't doing enough mining to make up for it. Two vikings here uh, coming in to try and take shots at the broodlords. The two Vikings again will not be enough to try and take these out, especially if the Corruptors move in, but the Corruptors are not moving in, they're a little bit distracted. Their owner is apparently macroing somewhere else. Like maybe apparently around this force, the Lings are going to surround this little, small little Marine force. Whatever happened to the tanks, I don't know, but these Marines are going to come in and take out the fourth base. And these Marines are cleaned up, but these ones are still doing damage. The Lings come in, fungal growth goes down, and that was cleaned up with no problem at all. These Marines and these tanks are going to go back home. But we are still seeing an engagement over here with the Broodlords. Still picking away, obviously that's basically being the bane of Terran's existence right now. He can't seem to find a way to get rid of those Broodlords. He needs to get Marines and Vikings over there to take out this, uh, this very pesky force. Ghosts come in and, uh, oh, huge snipes go off. We appear to be seeing, uh, the death of Broodlords right here. Actually, Ghosts are actually quite good when they are able to use their energy. They are cloaked, so they won't be able to be seen quite so easily. The Overseer might be a little bit out of position. These Ghosts are going to go back. They are completely out of energy, but they've done their big job killed off the Broodlords that were attacking, but there are more being morphed. Three more are about to come in, and the Lings are mobilizing over here. This is basically a prolonged siege of the third base. Uh, maybe an accidental stim there by the Terran. It was a little bit early. Huge fungal growth goes down. No bit back there to repair, or to repair, to heal the Marines, and they all managed to die to one single fungal. One Viking appears to be left on the field. We have two Vikings, but only one that I can see. Uh, there must be another one chilling somewhere. That's not nearly enough to take out these Corruptors and these Broodlords. We definitely do need to see an increase in Viking production. I don't believe the Terrans responded accurately to this threat, uh, especially when it considered it's only it's his only mining base left, really. So this is count. I'm not going to call that a mining base. We're going to be in Pesky over here. Uh, still see some long distance mining going down. Now he's going to start to mine from his fourth base again. 
Uh, he's also getting mined out, but he's not nearly in as dire of an economic situation as a Terran player is. Uh, Plan J4 just still refuses to go down, but unfortunately it can't just tilt its cannons a little bit upwards and shoot up, meaning that uh, it's going to be stuck for the time being. These tanks are also unable to shoot up, but they're able to shoot the broodlings to no end. Vespers come down here. Uh, they burrow, they're just kind of chilling. Get on burrow, you know. See the air again. Terran's in very, very dire straits here. He's unable to produce Vikings in an appropriate number. The mills are coming down in this base. He needs to try and expand uh, over here, preferably, but this burrowed Zergwin is going to give him a little bit of grief for the time being. And uh, prolonged siege of this this base. Supplies are getting equal. Uh, prolonged Broodlord attacking has allowed that to happen. Terran at one point was up by about 50 supply, but these Broodlords have allowed the Zerg to get back in the game as the Terran player didn't have adequate anti-air or in the appropriate positions. A small little force of marines and tanks and viking, since there's only one viking, uh, maybe going to try and attack this force head on, but I don't believe it's going to be possible. The planetary fortress does go down, SCVs are pulled away from that uh, non-existent base anymore to go back and mine somewhere else. I don't believe that's going to be possible, as that was the only mining base left for the Terran player. Just trying to re-expand down here, but he's unable to land that command center, as that burrowed zergling is still in the way. Uh, hopefully he scans and gets rid of that. It shouldn't be a huge deal. But this force is starting to look quite fearsome by the Zerg player. He's moving the Broodlords in to attack the natural base. Uh, it's currently only mining gas and long distance mining from the natural third for the Terran player. But uh, these Broodlings brood from the Broodlords will be able to do huge damage. And the Lynx can just run in and kill a huge number of SCVs. Supplies are starting to look uh, very much in the Zerg's favor. So he can macro at will. This guy goes down there trying to see any burrowed units, but I don't believe the Terran player has enough army left to deal with what the Zerg player is currently bringing in. Huge EMP goes down these infestors. One still has energy, but four were caught in that uh, electromagnetic blast. This natural command center does go down. Not a huge deal anymore because he wasn't mining from it anyways. This being his last mining base. Huge oversaturation going on there, but he no longer really has an army. He's fighting from about half supply of the Zerg here, and this one Viking. Obviously no match for the Corruptors, and there goes the GG down by Cerberus, our yellow Terran player. A uh, huge game there. The Terran player had a, an enormous lead as far as macro goes, and then he let it let it slip by trying to take an unnormal, an unnormal, unnatural third base, and uh, the Broodlords were able to siege that and basically win him the game. So another again, another cast for uh, the LPS StarCraft 2 Open number 2. We will be uploading more stuff over the course of the weekend. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this, and I will see you guys later.